It's the weekend and it's time for your Barbados Today Evening News update for Friday, March 25. Lawmen are investigating the circumstances which led a driver to crash into Macy's Bar at Dublin Road, Western St. James this evening. While no one was hurt during the ordeal, eyewitness Marcia Jordan Shepherd was in the shop at the time the car ploughed through the bar. She recounted the events leading up to the freak accident. Uh, years ago, the only bar, but my son and my daughter, daughter is only bar now. So I usually go over there upon a day and eat my lunch because I can't walk. I suffer with sadica nerves and arthritis, so I can't walk. So I goes over there and eat my lunch upon a day. That's where they put me upon a day to eat lunch. So I was there eating my breakfast and lunch together, and I hear this rumbling coming. So I see this thing flipping through the air, flipping through the air, coming at me, but I can't move because I didn't have my walker to walk to move. And I just see the thing come along, like this car line right side of me, and I see the driver get out and walk away. That's when I get up front side, try to get front side the table to move over there. And that's all. I just see this thing rambling coming through the air. It flipped from the top, the gap coming down, coming down, coming down. And I can't get it because I don't know where I, my cane wasn't there with me. So I can't move. I can't move to get nowhere. It's only when the driver get out of the car, I realize that like, you still there, so they know so something. I don't know if it's the car or it's something hit me on my feet. On my foot. I don't know what it is that hit me. So I just then try my son. They come and shout me and my grandchildren and bring me out. Manufacturers will just have to find another way to deal with the 100% increase in tax on sugar sweetened beverages. That's the frank view of Energy Minister Kerry Simmons in response to complaints from local manufacturers that the hike from 10 to 20% will hurt their businesses. While Simmons was adamant that manufacturers should not expect changes to the tax, he however indicated that the government was prepared to have a conversation with them on how they can produce healthier options. That is a conversation that is being had all around the world in every major capital. And I think that Barbados has now to step up to the plate. Um, it, it, we, we have a, a, an economy which has had a long history with sweetened beverages, I get that. But equally, we must also now have a conversation about how we make sure that the, the food and beverage intake of the country is as healthy as possible. And, and, and that is something I'm prepared to have by way of a conversation. Meanwhile, businesses have been put on notice that the days of going under the radar and not registering or paying the national insurance contributions are quickly coming to an end. Business Development Minister Kerry Simmons says officials in his ministry will be ramping up efforts to create a more enabling environment to help businesses to move into the formal sector. When we paused the economy last year because of uh, the COVID situation, a lot of people came forward and asked for assistance. There were very, very many of them who were not authentic or who were not able to demonstrate their authenticity because they had no official record of paying national insurance. They were not registered officially as a business entity, um, but hard times hit and you wanted help and we were called upon to provide help, but you can't just play foot loose and fancy free with the public purse. So it is necessary to have that official aspect to it. And, and, and we have now as a society to recognize that gone, hopefully forever are the days where business people feel that the best route is to go under the radar and not be um, officially registered. You can't get benefits um, that way and we really can't assist you by way of business interventions either. In other news this Friday, a government backbencher has raised questions about the compensation of residents for lands near Harrison's Cave. Speaking during today's session of Parliament, which dealt with a number of supplementaries to the estimates, Prescott expressed concerns that some landowners are yet to receive monies reportedly owed to them and has called for the matter to be addressed with dispatch. So I'm assuming that the area of the land um, around there came into the government's hand as a consequence of, of using compulsory acquisition on this, in these circumstances. Um, is this is there any truth that there are ordinary people that own land on the top of the cave and around the cave and the government has not fulfilled its obligation to these people? Um, is it a mythology, is it a misunderstanding by ordinary people um, or, or what is happening? I think it's a very uncomfortable position when we continue to talk in this manner and the general public and the ordinary people who claim to be landowners 
around or on top of the cave is still approaching members of parliament, certainly myself and some that were here before, uh, asking when is the government going to pay them um, for the use of the land that they have. As government presses ahead with plans to introduce the electronic single window project, former Economic Affairs and Investment Minister Marsha Cato has issued a caution that the project needs to coexist with present systems or its applications will all be for nothing. Cattle supported the supplementary request but cautioned that having a singular system that may not be synchronized with the existing systems across the government and the private sector could be problematic. But I think that the work also needs to talk to whatever are the existing systems across government as well as in the private sector um, that will mean that it functions well. And this is why I've said this. We have been plagued, plagued is the word I use, across government with sets of systems that either are not the optimal use, the, uh, the optimal software, the optimal um, program for what we're doing, or we decide that we are going to find someone far away and the nature of the contract is that in order for us to do anything with the program, we have to fly them in um, at whatever cost to the people of Barbados. Uh, we have gone through many, many, many scenarios where we have not optimized or we have not been most efficient in terms of how we choose and execute these kinds of platforms and these kinds of systems. I have every confidence that under the member's stewardship, that will not happen in this case. But I raise it as something that we have to be cautious about. The first floor of Mall 34 Bridgetown has been transformed into an incubator to support small businesses. Speaking during the renaming ceremony to Stores Avenue, floor manager Shauna Marshall announced that the mall will offer six dedicated spaces to entrepreneurs in an effort to help them to increase their sales. That is the reason why we would have rebranded that up here, seeing that it's under separate management, would have been distinguished in the manner now of the name of Stores Avenue. We have six, currently, right now we have six spaces available for rental. That is one aspect of it. Six, six stores right now available for rental and afterwards I will be able to give you a quick tour just to show you the different areas of that. Uh, we are open right now to most areas of business and we also have a separate service which is called the Flexi Plan Service where we are working or assisting entrepreneurs who are building up their clientele, building up their sales. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. A total of 142 people, 70 males and 72 females, tested positive for the viral illness on Thursday from the 844 tests carried out by the Beso Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprise 26 persons under the age of 18 and 116 who are 18 years and older. There were 45 people in isolation facilities, while 881 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional happenings, an orca hauled in by local fishermen has caused quite a stir in St. Lucia as the animal is endangered. Though not an illegal act, the leader of the Green Party, Andre Dakari, says the incident should be used as an opportunity to educate the St. Lucian public about the endangered animal. 
More in this report from DBS Television. Video footage of fishers hauling in what appears to be a baby orca has been making the rounds via social media. The anglers have come under scrutiny as orcas face a high risk of extinction. Leader of the National Green Party, Andrew DeCarries, has highlighted the importance of the orca and other wildlife to St. Lucia's tourism and economy. One of the growing um, areas in tourism is ecotourism and people are, you know, conscious of environmental issues and cruelty to animals. You know, these people in, 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 in the West are very um, conscious about how we treat animals. I mean, in the United States and Canada and England, if, if you, you know, treat an animal badly, you could end up in jail. Um, orcas are mammals, and they're one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. And they're actually an endangered species, and you're not supposed to kill them. On the international front, U.S. President Joe Biden got a first-hand look at the international efforts to help some of the millions of Ukraine war refugees in Poland. While visiting the area, the U.S. President also spoke to American troops, bolstering NATO's eastern flank. We get the details from Reuters TV. U.S. President Joe Biden landed in Poland on Friday to get a first-hand look at American troop readiness and the humanitarian toll from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We're in the midst of, and I don't want to sound too philosophic here, but you're in the midst of a fight between democracies and, 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 and oligarchs. His first visit was to U.S. soldiers with the 82nd Airborne Division at a base in eastern Poland. Several thousand American forces reinforced the NATO allies here and in Romania ahead of the Russian assault. And Biden repeatedly pledged to defend every square inch of territory under the Transatlantic Treaty. He shared pizza with soldiers and snapped selfies before meeting with Polish President Andrzej Duda and receiving a humanitarian briefing on the wave of Ukrainian refugees now sheltering in this country. Poland has taken in nearly two and a quarter million people fleeing violence in Ukraine, out of an estimated 3.7 million who have fled across borders over the last four weeks. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.